Hey guys, I have here a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from CERNS. About a month ago, one of my viewers asked if I would review this particular battery. Uh, he indicated he purchased one of these himself and had only seen 95 of the 100 amp hours on his tests, though many other reviews and comments online indicated that people were receiving over 100 amp hours of capacity in their tests. So I went and purchased one on AliExpress from the CERNS official store, and it was delivered very quickly. I believe they do have a US warehouse. Um, I ordered this on September 25th, and it was delivered on October 4th. And this cost me $344.50 delivered to my door. So we'll do the usual capacity test, overview of features, and a tear down to see what's inside, and hopefully we can get some answers to your questions. So this battery is model number LF12100. It is rated for 2,000 or greater cycles. Nominal voltage is 12.8 volts, or 3.2 volts per cell, which is standard. Interestingly, this battery does not indicate anywhere on the battery or the listing a recommended or maximum uh, charge current, though I did see it's capable of a maximum 100 amps discharge. This battery is actually in a very nice steel enclosure. It feels heavy duty and solid built. I did notice there is a piece of tape going around the rim of the battery. Let's pull that off here and see what's under it. So yeah, there are some screws holding this enclosure shut, and then it looks like it's also sealed with a layer of silicone. One thing I noticed on the top is this handle is fairly similar, pretty much exactly identical to the handle that's on the SOK battery enclosure. On the left hand side here, we have two battery posts for the positive and negative. It's the somewhat uh, standard thumb screw that we see on many cheaper batteries. Uh, and this does look like an M8 bolt based on visual appearance. On the top here, we have a battery capacity voltage display. So it's showing 13.5 volts. Um, I did already charge this battery before this video, so it did not ship like this. Uh, it was around 30% state of charge as required by shipping regulations. However, as we've noted in the past, these voltage displays are typically not driven by a shunt. Um, they're typically reporting capacity based on voltage alone, uh, more so for lead acid batteries, so they're not usually a good indicator of state of charge on lithium iron phosphate other than 0% and 100%. All right, I've got my standard test set up here, which you should be familiar with at this point. Battery is connected to a batrium shunt as the metering device. Goes to a 2000 watt 12 volt inverter. I have an HRC fuse for protection and safety here. Uh, my batrium off camera is transmitting data to this Android display where we can see voltage, amperage, wattage, uh, discharged amp hours and discharged watt hours. And my load is just a series of incandescent light bulbs. These are 72 watt bulbs. I'm not sure if I'll need three or four, so I'll see once I start the test here. But the target goal is 20 amp load or a 0.2 C rate on this battery. Uh, and one thing I haven't mentioned is I did charge this battery off camera ahead of time. Uh, just to save on time in this video, I used an iCharger X6 and I charged it until uh, the BMS in this battery actually cut it off. I'm going to go ahead and turn the inverter on. Alright, so four light bulbs is giving me 310 watts discharge, which is around a 0.24 C rate. So like usual, we'll leave this run until the uh, low voltage disconnect of this battery shuts down the test. All right, so our test finished at 96.96 .96 amp hours. Um, so we did not hit that 100 amp hour target. And that's consistent with what was reported in the original comment where I was asked to review this battery. I've never been a big fan of these thumb screw terminals. Uh, the issue with them is when you got your ring terminal on here, you can tighten it down. I mean, you can get it pretty tight with the thumb screw and even you put a pair of pliers on this, but there's really nothing to hold this down, so if you just pull on the cable, you can see how it loosens up. And this thumb screw ends up rotating with this cable. So when you have a regular bolt and you're using a socket to tighten this, you can number one, get it much tighter, and number two, you have a lock washer in there to prevent this from backing back off. If I were going to use a battery that came with thumb screws, uh, I would probably get rid of the thumb part. And this is just a standard bolt, I'd probably put a standard nut on top of here. As I noted earlier, there are a number of Phillips screws along the top of the enclosure. Oh, that was fairly easy. So there's our battery down in there. The sticker does say 100 amp hour on it, but it's encased in epoxy board there, so I'll have to cut all of the sealant to get it out. Uh, the cabling is kind of interesting here. We have three number 10 silicone wires feeding the negative and one number seven silicone wire feeding the positive. 
Additionally, I noticed there is a very large glob of sealant on the positive, probably to prevent that bolt from coming back out. Uh, but the negative terminal is not sealed in that same way, and that's rather unusual to me. Additionally, I did note that the state of charge sensor on the front is only fed by a positive and negative voltage sense cable. So we know there's no shunt that's actually metering the amp hours in and out. So the state of charge reporter on this display will not be completely accurate. All right, so I did break the silicone around all of the sides. And uh, we can see over here there is some blue, so these do appear to be aluminum case prismatic cells. I was wrong. I thought that blue was aluminum case prismatic cells. It's just a heat shrink, so I don't know what's on the inside yet. This thing is glued together uh, very well here. I guess that's why it has the IP56 rating, um, because the internal battery does appear to be sealed. So, All right, so the whole thing here is encased in this blue heat shrink, and then you can see it's also encased in one of these. Uh, these are just the epoxy board panels, and they have them taped together in all the corners here. All right, getting closer. All right, so there's the cells. They are aluminum cased prismatic cells. All right, we finally got the batteries out of this case. That was a pain in the butt. So here's the BMS on the side of it. This is a JBD BMS, which is good. Let's see there, it is rated for 100 amps. All right, so taking a look at the top of the battery here, the bus bars at first glance appear to be made of copper, but it's almost like it's just copper plated. Uh, and that would make sense because the posts on these batteries will be aluminum, so you don't really want copper welded directly to aluminum. So perhaps they copper plated these for the sake of ability to solder to them. So I also noticed here how nicely they have these balance conductors run. They're in on top of this insulative paper and they're held down with this fiber tape. Looking at the side profile of the cells here, we can see they have a couple layers of this fiber tape holding the cells together. Not really compressing them, but this will keep them from expanding. Additionally, I can see, you probably can't see it in the video very well, but they do have a layer of that insulative paper between each of the cells. Looking at the main uh, conductors here, they are soldered directly to this tab. So I guess that is why this tab is likely copper coated. So now the question is, why didn't these cells test at 100 amp hour? First of all, I can tell these are EVE batteries because the QR code starts with 02Y, which is the manufacturer identification used by EVE. It also has the classic EVE style of two circular terminals with a circular vent in the center with a blue vent cover. These two cells have the same QR code style. I noticed the cell on the end has a different QR code style. And I can't see the cell on the left because it's covered by this uh, positive post. These are actually 105 amp hours. And that can be seen and proven with this last cell here because on some of Eve's QR code style, it actually includes the nominal voltage and the capacity. So you can see here it says 3.2 volts at 105 amp hours. These cells are actually lining up pretty well. They appear to be nice and flat. They're not bloated. So, all right. So one thing I did notice is that there is no external temperature sensor coming off of this BMS anywhere. That would normally be an indication of low temperature uh, charging protection. I did find one temp sensor wedged in under here, so I don't know if this is it or not. So I am chilling a glass of water in the freezer and we'll come back and test this shortly. All right, so let's just check the cell voltages here at uh, empty state of charge and see what we're sitting with. We've got 2.95, 2.89, 2.75, .2 and 2.89. So it's this cell here at 2.75 volts that's really the lowest out of all four of them so I don't know if these cells are either out of balance that's not that's not a big discrepancy there though all right guys so I got my Ames charger on this battery here um, and it has stopped charging and I see there is a blue light blinking on the BMS so I'm going to guess this battery reached a high voltage disconnect on one of the cells here so we've got 3.33, 3.34, 3.34, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35, 3.35,
and uh, hopefully see if we can pull full capacity of this battery now that it's balanced. And test in progress. All right, and test number two finished at 98.79 amp hours. So we got an additional two amp hours out of it. Okay, so now I have this battery charging at one amp again. I'm going to dunk this temperature sensor uh, in some frozen salt water here. Um, see if I can get this cold temperature disconnect to trip. Uh, I don't believe this is going to have low temperature charge protection just because this sensor is not the typical kind of sensor I see for such purposes and it was shoved down the heat sink. I think this temperature sensor is here just to measure temperature of the heat sink and the FET transistors. Nope. And it's still charging and this water is freezing cold so I think it's safe to say this battery does not have low temp charging protection unfortunately I've put in way more effort than I should have trying to get full capacity out of this battery as we can see not only is it not a 100 amp battery as advertised it's also not 105 amps as indicated by uh, the batteries themselves what they should have tested at overall I still don't think this is a bad battery I would not personally recommend it because it's not meeting specifications. I don't like to promote something that's, that's being falsely advertised. In addition, it did not have low temp charging protection on the BMS. That's typically not a deal breaker for me personally, but that needs to be indicated where it's sold as well. That way the person purchasing does not expect there to be low temp charge protection. Having this negative terminal uh, not insulated here, I think this was a mistake. They didn't have sealant on it the same way they had sealant on the positive. So this is not sealed and if this battery were to get wet, uh, water will seep through this terminal here. This did have an IP56 rating and the 6 of the IP56 indicates that it can take a heavy stream of water without getting wet. So yeah, that being said, I hope this video was interesting and I hope that helped clarify and answer some of the questions that were asked. So as usual, any questions or comments, leave those below. Hit that like button before you go and thanks for watching.